everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. Good to be back on another Monday, Mott. You know, nice weather. And, uh, and uh, had a great time, I think, at the, uh, at the uh, Meadowlands, the Food and Wine Festival, and we're coming to Boston. Well, Foxborough. I'm going into enemy territory, Mott, on June 26th. Mott, link that up. Can you make that pop up right here from the video too? Um, June 26th, uh, doing wine events in Foxborough for the Great American Food and Wine Festival. Please be there. Tickets on sale. Mott's linking it up. Hope I see you there. Please, New Hampshire heads, New England, come and say hello. Leave a comment below if you're coming to that. Would love to see you. And we continue. I'm going to stop here. We're going to... I'm probably gonna skip tomorrow. Wednesday we'll be back with some other stuff, but we're gonna continue with the brown bag theme because we've been having a lot of fun with that. Uh, some interesting results on Grenache and, uh, and Chardonnay. Um, let's see if my palate continues to stay old world. I do, you know what, I am feeling good about myself. My palate is staying consistent. As you can see, I still lean, but you know, once in a while the new world keeps going heavy. We're now moving on to Merlot, uh, a grape that is, you know, obviously, after sideways, took a beating, but starting to get back on its feet, starting to reestablish itself. Uh, people are becoming less and less scared of it. Let's see what's going on here with color. Um, we're seeing, yeah, I think you're seeing the wine right here come across a little darker. This is a little cloudier. It's a little bit more clear, and this is a little cloudier, so that's kind of interesting. I'm actually going to veer off over here and give it a snippy sniff. Pretty nose, new world in its approach. Um, Good bright fruit, little blueberry action on the nose. A little kind of candy flavor for a second, but then it's a little more serious, a little inkiness. Good nose, bright, fresh, clean, fine. Let's see what's going on here on the left side. A little West Coast, East Coast battle. Biggie Pop. Hit him up. Um, this is coming across a little more rustic, a little bit more um, old world. Uh, it's got a little graininess, a little vegetal kind of component. So this is coming across a little bit more old world, a little bit more new world. I'm gonna start over here for that rationale because you don't want the fruit to overpower, so I'm gonna go with that direction. Let's give it a whirl. Medium bodied, a um, little light, a little light. Light alert, light alert. Um, um, good fruit though, I really like this sour pomegranate thing going on. If you're a pomegranate head like I am, sometimes it gets a little sour, a little sour cherry as well. Good, bright finish, a um, little grainy, not bad, a hair light that is really emerging as the theme there. Let's see what's going on over here. Oaky, not okay. Oaky, a little uh, oak monster. Second time in three blind tastings that we've had the oak monster appear. Not as quite as, you know, um, sugar level was a little higher. Tastes a little fake to me. It's kind of wines that do get big scores, but then a little bit of the style that, you know, I would eat food with this. I would drink this by itself. It's really as simple as that. More importantly, I would probably eat food with this. I'd probably not drink this wine by itself. So let's put it there. Stylistically, I prefer this wine, but I'm not sure that this wine is bringing the thunder either. And so I'm a little bit in a disappointed spot. I think that people that like the big fruit, yeah, um, little coffee though, little little coffee and tobacco on the back end. It started growing, grew on me a hair. Still a little fake, little rubber ball. Uh, you know, manipulated candy flavors on the initial attack on that wine. Finishes better than it starts. Much more my style. Much more. Kind of like it. Little light. You know, classic example of me thinking about you guys and myself. My style, um, 88, 84. Gut tells me this might be rated higher by the press. Might even be more expensive. 84 points. There you go. Cake bread. 
Mod, you gotta give the guy credit. I'm, I'm doing some good stuff out here. Are you happy with this? Yes. Seriously. Um, not, not that we should be giving me credit, you know, just stylistically, American wines tend to get a little more oaky. This is obviously a very fascinating, very famous vineyard. Cake bread sellers, 2006 Merlot, one of the iconic per producers. This is $53. I did say that I thought it would be expensive, so, you know, no score. And this, from the old world, no! But, an old world concept, a little bit lighter, but Old world concept, really good battle came off. Um, 35 US dollars, Stag's Leap Merlot. What did I score this? 92? No, no, not 92, that was the last one. This was, uh, this was 88 maybe? I thought that was 84. This was 84, this was what, 88? Yeah, I think it was. I think 88. Anyway, I was even a little high, 85 Enthusiast, 84 Parker, so I was being nice. I did make the note of being lighter. Um, and I could see that that's where it really bothered the uh, other critics. Um, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, if Monday didn't bother people enough, um, yeah, I mean, as you can see, I wasn't feeling them. Um, again, I would consider, you know, drinking this one with dinner. Would I say? I might drink this with dinner. I definitely wouldn't drink this by itself. This is about the worst hundred dollars that we've put on the table in a while. And this stinks because this like feeds into the Merlot monster. Because you're gonna have comments now like, see, this is why I don't drink Merlot. Um, question day. What's the last Merlot you had? And review it for me, would you? You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.